On the next episode of Get Real, we talk about the all-new Barbie movie. During World War II, Lieutenant General Leslie Groves Jr. appoints Barbie to work on the top-secret Manhattan Project. Barbie and a team of scientists spend years developing and designing the atomic bomb. Their work comes to fruition on July 16, 1945, as they witness the world's first nuclear explosion, forever changing the course of history. What will happen next, you ask? Find out on an all-new episode of Get Real! Hi, Ken. Hi. Oh, you didn't do it. Oh, what was I supposed to do? Sorry, was that a thing? Hi, Barbie. Oh, hi, hi Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Barbie. Can I come to your house tonight? Sure. I don't have anything big planned, just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and plant choreography and a bespoke song. You should stop by. So cool. Um, I don't think you introduced it right. Did you like that intro I did? <laughs> yeah. um, was that good? Was that uh, was that great? That yeah. was the, that was the synopsis of the all new Barbie movie, um, which we're going to talk about on this episode. Yes. Hi, I'm Hot Toddy. <laughs> That's Miss Pingrino, and welcome to an all new episode of You Start Again. Get. Bent. And on this episode, we will be talking about the all-new Barbie movie, uh, which is not the plot that I described. It is not the plot. It is the plot <laughs> of the other movie that came out this Although, weekend. Although, let's be real, it, it might, have, might as well have been the plot that you described. I mean, it's, whoo, it's a lot. There's a lot to unpack with this film. Right. Let's this, just jump right in. I guess. Well, let me ask you, Ms. Fingrino, because okay. this, this is a tradition on the show. What did you think of Barbie? Well. Is that what it's called, or is it called the Barbie movie? I, I, don't, I think it's called the Barbie movie. I don't. I'm not is familiar. It? I don't know. So, my take. It was a good movie. However, was it not a movie or uh, no? <laughs> no? Oh, who am I? What am I? Um, it was not the movie I was expecting no. and not the movie I was prepared for and wanted to see. That's going to be the big thing that we talk about in right. this episode. Is, so yeah. the movie in general, an okay mm -hmm. to see movie. Sure. If you were prepared for that kind of movie. Um, yeah. And I was not. I, I, I can guarantee you that nobody was. No. And I, I've heard, <laughs> overall, the movie is getting fantastic reviews. It's doing fantastic. The box office is big lit huge on it, uh, which is really great news for Margot Robbie. Because I love her. I, I, I was, uh, I, I've been watching online of like other movie reviewers and people like that talk about her career. And she's been pretty relevant, really, with it just within the last decade, ten years almost exactly, because we really first got introduced to her in The Wolf of Wall Street with Leonardo DiCaprio. Right. Uh, she played his wife in that movie, and she was great in that. And then her career took off. She was in a lot of movies. I mean, she's Harley been, Quinn. She, what well, she's been? That's what I'm saying. She's been in a lot of movies the last ten years. Yeah. None of them have done great. She's not really no. been in any films that have done super well, super well. but she's a superstar. She's an A-lister. It, it sucks because I love her. Yeah, I really the, do. The I'm only, a fan of her as an actress. The only movie that has done super well that she's been in since Wolf of Wall Street was, ironically, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which also featured Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, but Maybe the movie just needs to keep doing with him. I guess, but and, really, <laughs> yeah, the, guess. that movie wasn't super focused on her character anyway. She no. was a she was a part of it, but it was more of a side plot. Um, but yeah, a lot of the stuff that was starring her hasn't done super well. So this is great news for her uh, that Barbie has been such a big hit. But um, but yeah, that's that's the thing mm -hmm. about this movie is that it is the quintessential bait and switch. Yeah. So let me explain what I I meant by how I feel. Yes. And what he means by a bait and switch. Put 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 your words into feelings. Put, put words. Are, are your feelings into words? Into words. I'm not however sure. Yeah. It. However you do it. So, given all of the trailers, all of the hype, especially with Oppenheimer coming out at the same time, it was supposed to be like one serious film that really dug deep and like hit you in the feels, and one that was like fun and had a message but was like lighthearted and awesome and just weird and fun to watch. You have to choose which one that is. 
Right. However... The, the answer may shock you. It was supposed to be like one serious film that really dug deep and like hit you in the feels and one that was like fun and had a message but was like lighthearted and awesome and just weird and fun to watch. What in the hell is going on? The answer may shock you because Barbie was not the fun to watch one. Well, it wasn't light. I mean, okay. We, we have to get into that. Yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah. So I was expecting this almost kind of like spoofish type movie, I guess. Well, it, it, satire. It was both, satire. Like this Thank movie, you. when I when I saw the trailers, it reminded me very much of the Brady Bunch movies. You remember those that came out yes. in the 90s? Where yes. it was like, oh, it's the Brady Bunch. Here's the story. I love it. But then, then when they leave their house, it's it's today's world. And it's right. like, everybody's like, what the hell is wrong with you people? Why you know? are you stuck in this Right, time? right. Mm -hmm. So where, where it was that supposed is exactly to, where where was a movie that was supposed to be like based on characters, turned out to be more of a parody and a satire yes. and was more funny that way. And that's why those movies are really great. And, and therefore, this is what I thought this was going to be. This mm -hmm. is what I expected. I think this is what you expected. Yeah. I think this is what everyone kind of expected yeah, it was yeah. going to be. Like, literally bringing you back to your childhood where you played with Barbies and it was just fun and she could do whatever and blah, blah, blah. Like, all of this stuff. And no. No! So, yeah. <laughs> so... From the trailer, that I mean, that's you basically hit it. From the trailers, it made you think that Barbie, yeah, it was a Barbie lived in the Barbie world, and and then she was gonna come to the real world because it was gonna be she wanted to explore and it was gonna be exciting. And then as it turns out, uh, everything in the real world kind of sucks, and she has to find kind of navigate her way through it, and then she learn a lesson and move on. That and and which, the thing is, that's what sorta happened. Right, which I would have been fine yes. with her coming to the real world, mm -hmm. noticing it, it it sucked. Yes. But I was expecting more funny instances in the real world. Right. Like, we were only in the real world for 20 minutes of the movie. At, at the most. At the most. Yeah. Like, the rest took place in Barbie Land, which is not necessarily a bad thing that it did, but well, it, it just it, it's, it's it's bait and switch is what it yeah, was. Yeah, it it's really, just, really was. We we thought it was going to be one thing. It turned out to be the complete opposite, which again is is refreshing in a way, uh, but it's also kind of like pulling the rug out from under you. Now, yeah. Um, what needs to be said is that the message in the movie is super positive. Wonderful message. The, Fan freaking tastic. And I, I really do like what they did with it. The message of the movie is basically, uh, you know, women are looked at as second class citizens in mm -hmm. the real world. And, uh, and, and how we have to boost someone up without being rude, or yeah. we have to be perfect without overstepping, or we like all of these things that all of us women think all the freaking time. They basically explain in the movie just how difficult it is to get ahead as a woman in the in the in, in the, the real world. world because no matter what they do, they will be criticized for what for what they do. Right. And it's a it's a very powerful message and very real today in this world where women's rights are getting taken away left and right and nobody seems to care and it's you know it's it's we mean yeah, nothing. Yeah. It's a bit well I don't want to say yeah, yeah. 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 You mean nothing. I no. mean nothing. That's in poor taste. No, what I mean, what I mean is, Hot Toddy does not think that. By no, the way, guys, not no. at all. No, what I mean is, is that that's a very real situation that yeah. we're dealing with these days. So the, so that's the overall arcing message of this film. So fantastic message. Yeah, it's just my God, they, they really punched you in the gut. I, I, um, I said it felt like a therapy session once yeah. I got out of it. Yeah. So the way they hit it, mm -hmm. um, was basically by. So Margot Robbie plays stereotypical Barbie. She doesn't right. play any of the ones with the careers or the specialties. She all plays the women in Barbie land are Barbie. Are Barbie? They're different. They're versions all Barbie. Of Barbie. Yeah. They're just Barbie who does different things. Yeah. And she is stereotypical Barbie. Which that stereotypical Barbie, since we've been a kid, was always like the Stepford housewife mm -hmm. Barbie. Like she was just meant to be perfect. The blonde. And the blonde. You the, know the beautiful. The fit. The, yeah, all these things. Yeah. And so it is literally, this movie is breaking her down because she's stereotypical, breaking down all these stereotypes that she is supposed to represent to show her that one, in the real world, this doesn't exist. It is not a thing. And how to still accept herself when she cannot meet all these expectations, when she cannot be that perfect person. Again, that's a wonderful message because women, we as women are held to ridiculous standards. 
through work, body, like feelings, emotion, everything. We are held to insane standards. And she is this representation of that. And she is broken down, literally to not wanting to exist broken down. And then built back up towards the very end that she can still do this. That being said, because it was like that, that was really harsh. It was a punch in the gut. Like, it, it, it made me feel how I was not wanting to feel watching this movie. It's not that you didn't want to feel it, you just didn't expect I to didn't feel expect that way. I didn't expect to feel it. In, a, in the Barbie movie. In the Barbie movie. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, but, you know, like you said, fantastic message. Great. Amazing. But it was told in the most nonsensical way. Yeah. It was just so bizarre. Apparently, like... I, I compared it to Space Jam because Space Jam, nobody knows that there's a there, the, the secret Warner Brothers cartoon world is underground, except somebody who gets sucked down there, Michael Jordan, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this movie, it's like a big consp it's like a big cover up. It's yeah, like Mattel a Mattel. It's is like a, covering up the fact that there is like a whole Barbie, Barbie land, world. like it's its own country on the map. It's like but nobody this, knows. Yeah, it. it's like a governmental like, conspiracy cover up. Cover -up yeah. And and so when Barbie and Ken come into the real world, um, they're like, "Oh no, we gotta get them back." And then <laughs> and so Will the Ferrell, the FBI calls, "Do your Barbies have escaped?" Yeah, the <laughs> FBI <laughs> calls. <laughs> it's so weird. And then Will Ferrell is the uh, CEO of Mattel, and and then there's this the, the scene where they lost me. And I th I thought I was gonna leave the theater at that time was when they started chasing Barbie around the Mattel. Headquarters. <laughs> I actually and it, like that one. And That's it just good. it turned into like a like a scene in a play, like a like an experimental scene in a play, and they're running <laughs> like this, and because they're running around all these cubicles, and they but they're can't not catch her. They're not really <laughs> running. It's oh god. And then they run into each other, and they scare each other, and they run away, and then he's like, oh shit, I was supposed to catch her. <laughs> and that and then it turns into like a Three Stooges thing, where they yeah they they see each other around the corner, and go ah ah ah, and then run away. <laughs> It just got stupid, and I'm like, <laughs> God, this movie is so nonsensical. It didn't. It just like I, you could you could tell you could have told this story in a much better way. Yeah. They just chose to go down this weirdo path, and it rattled my brain a well, little bit. Like, again, I do think they were maybe trying for some satire, mm -hmm. but because the message was so deep and harsh. The two did not meld. You could They did not meld those. Meld. You said melt. Meld. Sorry. Yeah, this is melt. This is meld. Mm -hmm. Pause to read, both of you will. I, I wouldn't have a lot of time to just keep it up on the screen. Oh, we're doing that again. Yep. Surprise, mother wow. They did not meld them very well together. They, whoa, missed that mark. You're a woman. You need to stop talking. Make me some Get brownies. Get out of here. Ah, make me some brownies. Why are you the way that you are? I don't cook. I'll burn this bitch down. Ah, ah. Actually, I I would be able to cook them, but I may poison you in the process. That's, oh. Not purposefully, actually. Well, actually purposefully, yeah. Well, probably, maybe. yeah. You never know. <laughs> don't tell nobody. In the movie, I mean, the movie isn't bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's not bad. It's just not what you expected. It's a completely... And it's, it's really funny, too, because yeah. everybody came dressed up, decked in their pink and their Barbie, even saw a guy in a pink dress with a blonde wig, and I was like, yeah, represent, dude, like, killing it. But they did not... But I, you're going yeah. in thinking this is going to be a hilarious satire film that you're just going to love. You're going to get broken. And then you walk out <laughs> the theater and you're like, ah! What have I done? Literally, oh. there were people who walked out behind us, mm -hmm. and while he was using the bathroom, I was listening, and they're like, "Oh, well, that wasn't what I expected." <laughs> and it was like four women who were decked out in their Barbie gear. And yeah, they, were like, they literally said the same thing. They're like, "Well, that was good." Yeah, yeah. But I no, well, I that's not what I wanted. Well, I wonder what was going on when like all the. Rep like famous Republican conservative people were like up in arms. Like Ben Shapiro is like burning Barbies now. Like, oh my god! Because uh, heaven forbid we support because, women. Because it was a, and what they can do. It was a woke movie, and 
It's like, no, it's a movie where it, that basically says a woman can be, literally can be anything that she Whatever wants to be. She wants. And that's what Barbie personifies. And that, and that's the point of the movie. It's, it's very, very metaphoric and philosophical because Barbie lives in the, in the Barbie world. Yeah. Uh, I, every time I say that, I have the Aqua song come up in my head. But uh, here's a little bit of it. And that's all we can play. We can't play anymore. Um, but yeah, but like she thinks everything is amazing, everything yeah. is great, and then you she comes to the real world and she realizes everything is is terrible and that nothing good has happened, and that's what makes it so metaphorical yeah. because that's like what little girls or you know or women who have Barbies do. Like they they play with Barbies, they play with dolls and action figures to to escape the real world, to go right. into this real world where Barbie is president, where there's nothing but women and Barbies on the Supreme Court. And then when you're out of the real, and when you're out of the Barbie world, you come back to the real world, you realize just how sucky everything is. Because and it's it's that's oh it just I I love that was my favorite part yeah was there is you got that metaphorical message and I was like mm, that was in right Barbie on. Yeah. world there are Kens there are Kens but they're the second class citizens they are the second class citizens like mm -hmm. literally the first of the movie they're like Ken's <clears throat> job is to be noticed by Barbie Ken's Ken as a matter of fact Ryan Gosling's uh, Ken's job is beach. Beach. It's just His beach. Job is beach. It's just beach. It's not, not lifeguard. Water. It's not, not a lifeguard. It's not lifeguard. It's not surfing. It's beach. It's beach. It's just beach. It's beach. And so yeah. <laughs> so like, but I like that twist, and because like they're the eye candy as opposed to mm -hmm. you know Barbie being the eye candy, and 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 re and really they're not even looked at. They're just no. like oh hi Ken. They don't they don't have their own houses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't have their own cars. Like. Barbie has all of these things. Yeah. All the Barbies have all of these things. Which, by the way, I love that they went with the inclusive Barbies and not just old school Barbies. Yeah. So there was a girl in a wheelchair. There were plus size Barbies. There were um, Barbies of all colors. Barbies of all hair colors. Like, and you of, name it. And of course, weirdo Bob Barbie. Weir, you weird, you know, Barbie. Weird Barbie. Played by Kate McKinnon. I love her. Who did a great job. <laughs> I, I've missed her. I haven't seen her in like a year or so since she left SNL. So yeah. it's nice to see her in something. Uh, and she but played, I, I love that they went with that. Yeah, and she plays Weird Barbie. And what Weird Barbie is, it's Barbie that's all messed up looking. Due, because? Because due to the fact that they were, she was played rough as, with a child. So all of these Barbies love it. from Barbie land yeah. are played with in the real world. Yes. So they there is a link. This is why there is a link between the real world and Barbie world. Because they are played with by little girls. This is how Margot Robbie starts to kind of feel non-Barbie-ish. Is because the person playing with her, America... Ferrara. Ferrara. Um, she has actually taken one of her daughter's Barbies because she's having a rough go. And she starts thinking about thoughts of death and getting cellulite and just being tired all the time and not perfect. And so her Barbie, a.k.a. Margot Robbie, Gets starts affected. to feel these yeah. things. Mm -hmm. Do you guys ever think about dying? <laughs> because they're linked. Right. And so she has to go into the real world to either fix this link or break it or do whatever she needs to do. Which is a great plot. Yeah. But then yeah, it just it 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 gets really it gets really deep after a while and a little dark. Uh, a little dark a little bit, but <clears throat> a little Oppenheimer. A little Oppenheimer. <laughs> a little That's what I'm saying. Oppenheimer. It's like everybody was expecting this to be the the high-spirited fun movie and it it really is not. I mean, nope. there's some funny moments, but but yeah, there were some times where I just rolled my eyes because it was just so nonsensically put together. And that's where we need to get into is, is talking about the production of the film. And it's just, there's so many things that they could have done different. I, I, you know, the, the fact that Ken, when Ken comes to the real world, he learns about the patriarchy. Then he goes back to Barbie world and he tries to take over Barbie world as and make it kingdom or something like that. He wants to be a man. Yeah. Like in the real world. And I'm just like, well, that's, that's a weird way to go about it. I, yeah. you know, I, I, I like the aspect of going to the real world and learning the real world aspects. But then, but then there's a villain. You have to defeat the villain. And why is Ken the villain? It's like I but it I, just was. I think why they did it. Mm -hmm. Um, because here's a little bit again, of this. again, the reason why he's the villain is because it's you know the man trying to do the patriarchy right. thing, which I get, but it just like that's such a non again little. nonsensical way. That that is the that is the quote. Of this episode, can, can talk. nonsensical. No, you're a woman. I'm talking. Oh, we did it again. Emotional damage. Anyways, a little bit of a spoiler here. I think they kind of needed Ken to try and take over because at the end, obviously, the Barbies get it back. However, the Barbies also kind of realize that maybe women shouldn't have like all the control either. 
not like they should be out of control, but maybe something about sharing. Equality. Equality. Which is, which is. Grant you, they don't make the Kens fully equal. No, no. But they don't make them unnoticeable anymore. Right. They let the Kens kind of figure out what they want to do and become themselves as well as being a Bart, you know. But yeah, and but like there's, again, as, and as great as that is, there were some things we just didn't, like, we did not need Will Ferrell's character. We did not no. need that whole thing. He, I actually forgot I about him, him for a while. He was on his way. He and his his cohorts were on the on their way to Barbie, Barbie World, <laughs> and they I, they were gone for like thirty minutes. Like you yeah. didn't hear from them. You didn't see you didn't see them for a while, and then all of a sudden they just pop out. Like oh, that's right, they're in this movie. In you, yeah. you didn't need that subplot at all. You didn't need that at all. Sadly, because I love Will Ferrell. Yeah. Um, and because I thought this was gonna be like a ha 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 ha. Movie. I thought he was going to be um, all through it. Yeah, I thought it would be great. Um, but I like the part with America Ferrera and her daughter. Because they, had, they represent the quintessential real life women. If they had a bigger so, role yeah. and it was more about them. Because like I said, they kind of get tossed to the sidelines for a little bit. Eventually America Ferrara becomes like the voice of reason. So it, it does pan out. But it's just like there was a lot of forgotten in order to push this narrative of, of Ken being patriarchy and and Barbie hating her life and hating herself and it was just a lot and like I said it was kind of a drag for a while we filmed it very ADD-ish mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah they did yeah. like oh we're watching this now but let's jump over here yeah, but let's and see now what, how about here let's see what's going on over here and what about that there. one yeah. how about this one like it was sort of like a, <laughs> which granted I have ADD so I could follow it, it was sort of like a, a Valentine's remember those film. movies Valentine's Day and New Year's Eve that had oh, the giant multiple uns- stories ensemble that you cast right pop through quickly Rat Race the, it's a mad 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 yeah. mad world all movies like that where you have giant ensemble casts and you go back and forth only this didn't have a giant ensemble cast it had a good small cast but it wasn't a giant so but they still yeah. found a way to go from here there and everywhere. And so it was just filmed in a very... You didn't muck around? Uh, a little bit there, yeah. <laughs> so it was just filmed in a very awkward... It was filmed in an awkward way. Way. And so that's what kind of, I think, took maybe took some people out of it. Again, the overall message and the overall film is very good. It's, it's very interesting, and I can see why it's getting such good reviews, because it was a very positively messaged movie. It is a positive message. Movie. Yes, and it was a, a generally a good movie. It was, yeah, yeah. It's and just... It's not what you expect. It's not what you it's expect, not. and that's kind of hard for yeah. me. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming... I'm assuming? You're assuming. I'm assuming. Oh. I'm assuming for you, too. Like, when you expect a movie to be a certain way, if it's really far off from what you expect, it kind of takes you out of it and makes it harder to enjoy. Yeah. Because, like, I knew if we were going to go see Oppenheimer, <laughs> we were building a bomb. It was going to be <laughs> really serious. There's more than just building a bomb, Miss Pingrino. Stop tape for discussion. Anyways, it was going to be really serious. It was going to mm-hmm. be a real hard hit. It was going to be in, you know, like, in depth. Mm-hmm. And I would have been mentally prepared for that. Mm-hmm. I was not expecting to have to be mentally prepared for Barbie. I wanted to go and not think, and I didn't. I had to think, and that was a lot. That was a lot. This is this was supposed to be a turn your brain off type <laughs> yes. movie. Yes, and uh, I mean, they, that's what I wanted. They made us think. They made us think. How dare they? How dare they? Miss Pingrino, make us think in a in a kids movie or what's supposed to be a kids movie. Is it supposed to be a kids? Movie it's now? not. I I wouldn't take the kid. That's I, I would. I'm just well, gonna say this. Don't take the kids. I don't want to say not take the kids. Maybe thirteen and above. By that point, they're not really kids anymore. I mean, there are. I mean, they're still legally kids, but yeah. I think the, the the you would think the age range for this movie would be single digits. You know, somebody in the t- well, elementary school age. I would have thought. Uh, I mean, I, I did know that they weren't going to target that young, but I would say that they were trying. In my mind, what I'm thinking about this particular movie, they were targeting between maybe. Nine and fifteen. Just those two ages, nine and fifteen. Nine to fifteen. Working nine to fifteen. Stop. What a way to make a living. Bitch, are you for real? But no, like those those quintessential ages where like you're you're realizing that these things you've played with forever 
maybe have given you false hope of what the real world's gonna be. Right. So that that would be that age range to like perfectly hit. So and is be this like, is, is this a way of saying don't play with Barbies because they give you false hope? No. <laughs> about the world. No, because obviously you do want to play with Barbies. You want to build the fact that always think that you can be whatever you want to be and right. attempt to be whatever you want to be. Just be realistic about it that it's probably going to be a little harder than what you think. Yeah. Like there's there's more to it than just saying, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be an astronaut. I'm going to be the president. I'm going to be the president. I'm going to be on the Supreme Court. Like yeah. it's, it's not as easy as just one, two, three, one, two, three and mm -hmm. being it. I mean, and that goes for boys and girls. That's yeah. not just like, you know, we tell children that they can be whatever they want to be. And right, right. You hope growing up that they can. But it but might not be not the case. so easy. Yeah, exactly. Um, especially in today's world. So right. I, I would have figured it would have tried to target those kind of ages to like build up that, yeah, you can still be what you want to be, but you need to work hard. And like, you got to do the thing. It's, it's interesting take, Miss Ben Green. But, I like that. But yeah. I feel like it aged ranged up a little bit more into like almost like the teens early 20s and hit mm. it in a dark sense i mean that's that's basically like, all of our movies nowadays just have dark messages like it, it hit in the you're probably in the stage where you've realized you may not be able to do everything yeah and you're feeling like pardon my french but shit. is but that french it's uh, is she <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of like hitting that where you thought you've re you're realizing everything is not what it was when you were a kid, but to not give up on yourself. So I think it hit an age range that was a little bit older than what everybody was expecting it to hit. Because mm. you know, in my mind, it was going to hit that young age range, but we were going to like it because it was going to have those like innuendos and adult messages, haha's that were funny. Sure. Still for us. So that, that's where my mind I kind of zoned out, but uh, I see that. Because I'm a woman and you don't want to listen to what I no, have to say. No, it was just a lot. And I, I followed for a bit and I kind of got lost. But the overall, your overall point is very well taken and I agree. Um, so with that in mind, uh, everything that we know now about it being somewhat nonsensical, kind of dumb, ADD-ish put together, but with a positive message, uh, with all of that in mind, do, would you recommend the Barbie movie? That's kind of a tough one for me. Um, maybe wait till it comes out and rent it. I don't think it's necessarily worth a, worth a theater experience. It's not really. Right, um, I yeah. think that's very expensive for something that you may not as you may not be as excited about as you think you're gonna be. Um, also, kind of change your expectation of what you're expecting with this movie. Yeah, that was that was gonna be yeah. what I was gonna say. Yeah. Um, I, I would wait. And rent it. Mm -hmm. And that, and yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> well, and I, 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 I recommend it as well. Um, maybe don't see it in the theater, but if you do see it in the theater, yes, lower your expectation. Uh, let's, I wouldn't let's, say you need to lower, just change. Just change it just a little change. bit. Uh, you know, uh, just know that there's going to be a lot more feels in this movie mm -hmm. than it is just wacky nonsense. It's not, yeah. it's, it's actually a very well put together movie, and there's a very powerful message behind it. So, if if you are one of these weirdos, it's like, well, oh, oh, see this movie is gonna be, blah, 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 uh, then I'm just gonna warn you now: don't go see it and then come out and complain about it because I don't want to see it on my Facebook timeline. Okay? Yeah. So um, there's that. It's uh, too woke. It's too no, woke. I don't. don't want, I, I don't want to hear that. Yeah. Stop. This movie has a very important message, and it is. And don't kid yourself. It is a very important message. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, if you're just going into for a non, you know, for a crazy you know silly family family movie it's not it's not that fully that so yeah. it's a it's a cautious recommendation see it in the theater if you really want to if i were you i would wait until it comes out on some sort of streaming yeah but overall it's a fine film yeah it's a fine film so there you have it that's the barbie movie in theaters Is Bobby Boot if you still in doubt? And now here's a special clip of the next episode of Get Real. Can I come to your house tonight? We're in a race against the Nazis. 